Okay. One more Gmod video. What do soft lamps do? It makes soft shadows and does a form of ray tracing. What I will not be covering, Photoshop knowledge beyond what is necessary, artistic knowledge such as color fundamentals and composition, posing, and scene building. And by extension, I'm not responsible for the assets at your disposal and neither will I offer any whether you ask or not. Pigger has uploaded a ton of quality huge scene building packs ported by various talented slavers. I'll leave a link to his workshop page in the description. But do note that Pigger is not the one who ported everything, so try not to ask him for anything. What you need. You need Photoshop or GIMP or any other software that can screen layers. You need this pack of tools called V-Add-ons. And from that you need soft lamps, V-Trace, V-Plane and Scenic Dispenser. You need this bind which toggles this little light box. I recommend a bind for matte Fulbright. I recommend a bind for effect rings. Set R underscore projected texture filter to zero because by default it makes shadows really grainy and fucked up. And this number which controls shadow resolution. The number should be a multiple of 1024 and it should be the highest number possible without making your game crash. I use the one that Vioxstar uses, which is 40,958,976, but apparently that doesn't work for some people and generally it becomes unnoticeable above like 20,000. The settings inside the lamp aren't too complicated. Brightness, which is brightness. I like to keep it at 8 when I'm working and around 4 when I'm rendering. FOV, which is your lamp FOV. An important note to remember is that the higher the FOV, the lower quality your shadows will be. A low FOV lamp a long distance away is better than a close lamp with a high FOV. Near Z does this. If your Near Z is too far away from your scene, you'll get shadow errors. And if your Near Z goes through something, you'll also get shadow errors. Get it as close to your scene as possible without causing any issues. Far Z is how far your lamp travels. I used to believe that this affected shadows, but it doesn't. Just make it as far as you want. Focal point distance, which is something we will come back to. Now you see these two categories. The difference between heavy light and gameplay is important. Heavy light is what will be displayed during a render, and gameplay is what is displayed while you're playing the game. Be very careful when editing gameplay settings. Surface shape is the shape of this little group of lights. Each dot represents an individual lamp that will be stacked during the rendering process. Disc is the best for most situations. Surface radius is how big of a space the shape takes up. Surface radius and lamp FOV are different parameters. Lamp FOV controls the radius of each individual lamp, whereas surface radius defines the space all of the lamps will cover. Surface resolution controls how many lamps will be in that shape, not shadow resolution. That's done with the depth res command and the FOV settings. I like keeping it at 10 or 11. Too low means that you see the individual lamps and too high means that it'll just take too long and probably burn your colors. Try not to fuck with this setting under gameplay, it'll spawn multiple lamps and that's generally a game killer. These tick boxes display the light points and define if they show through surfaces. Sometimes you want to turn these off if they end up in your shop because they will come through in a render. Lighting a scene! A general approach to lighting with soft lamps is comprised of three main elements. Sunlight, light bounce and ambience or overhead. These three stack up in Photoshop and create a result that you generally wouldn't expect from kids game. Please for the love of god when you're learning this shit start small. Don't get excited and build something huge because if you get overwhelmed it'll kill your enjoyment. Familiarize yourself with your tools and their functions before going wild with them. The last thing you want to do is burn yourself out because this process is a bitch to learn. First off, you want to do this on any variant of GM Black. Soft lamps only works in completely lightless environments as the way the render process stacks light will also stack any map lighting in the picture. Side note about GM Black, there is a terrifying spooky spot of light at the spawn coordinates that many people, including me, have accidentally built their scene over. This will more or less ruin your scene, so make sure to know where it is and build away from it, or mark it with an object. So I build scene, and I've got my lamp. Before running anything, go fetch your atmosphere editors. Set all your sky colors to completely black. Soft lamps renders will stack any colors in your sky and it'll just look munted. Don't set it to white because it becomes extremely hard to work with in post. Point the sun editor as down and out of the way as possible, and set your fog parameters both to 1 million, or whatever this number is. Again, soft lamps will stack any fog in the render process and even if you don't see it, the fucking rendering thing will. Put the editors in a spot that you'll remember because you'll need these later. With that out of the way, we've met the requirements for a clean render and we need to set our lamp settings. There's no real correct setup, but for sunlight layers I set surface radius to 20, 
This gives me a defined but realistically soft shadow. Surface resolution to 10, and brightness between 4 and 12. It depends on the size of the scene. Find an interesting sun angle where you capture both highlights and shadows and then open up the console. Next, you need to decide if you want anti-aliasing on or off. Softlamps handles anti-aliasing separately from the Gmod settings, and you'll need to punch in a separate command if you want this or not. Anti-aliasing prevents what real artists, such as myself, call jaggies, which will always ruin your picture without exception. But with softlamps, anti-aliasing being enabled also creates color burning on dark brown, dark green, and dark gray surfaces. You can create an anti-aliasing effect in Photoshop by downscaling your image, but that requires running at a higher resolution, which of course costs more time. I tend to combine both in-game AA and downscaling because the source engine just fucking sucks. The next extremely important parameter is Poster Darken. Poster Darken defines how much your final render will balance the brightness of the stacking process. By default it's on 1, and generally by default it's too dark. I tend to render everything at 0.1, but this is again dependent on your lamp brightness, more than anything. There's no correct number. With those out of the way, it's as simple as just running any other poster command. Just punch in poster underscore soft and then your poster size and it'll run your render. With your game running at a standard 1080p resolution, poster 1 will be 1920 by 1080 Poster 2 will be at 4K, 3840 by 2160 Poster 3 will be 5760 by 3240 and poster 4 will be too high. Bang! Sunlight. Before moving your lamp, you'll want to scan your scene with light sprayer, because this is the sun lamp and light bounces off sun. Yeah. Side note, do not spawn more than one lamp and do not attempt to light your whole scene in-game. This is an exterior process and involves exterior rendering. Now the light sprayer tool looks much scarier than it is. Whip it out and hold R. If you don't see any green dots, whip out scenic dispenser and press R, then switch back to light sprayer. These green dots represent where it's going to shoot light points, which are little omnidirectional lights that cast the color of the surface they inhabit. Or bootleg ray tracing. FOV, adjust your view FOV. It's helpful for focusing your points on the scene. Start distance and end distance is like near Z and far Z. Match it up with your scene as close as you can. The larger the distance it has to cover, the longer the scan will take, so don't be too generous. Accuracy tolerance is hard to explain, but it does this when it's high and it does this when it's low. I just keep it at around 1.5, 1.75-ish. If it's too low, sometimes you experience this weird glitch where it just sprays everything as a flat plane. Radius is the amount of screen space that these helper dots cover. Interval is how many dots cover your screen. Be careful when editing this value. If it goes to 1 or 0, it's generally a game killer. Jitter creates randomness, and it's up to you if you use it. Offset is important. At its default value, points will render too close to the ground to cast much light above them. Negative 8 raises them just high enough to get their full effect without compromising the accuracy of the render. Once you're happy with these settings, turn off effect rings because it just won't run when you have effect rings on, and click. Try not to click again during the scan because then it'll scan again and create way too many points. You can press show light points to show light points, and if you wish to delete any you can do so by right clicking. The bottom two parameters underneath colors affect the radius and density of your edits. Open up the console and check how many points it made. Try to aim for no higher than 10,000, otherwise it'll generally take an extremely long time. Before running a light bounce render, you'll need to set your depth res to 1024. I like to have the 4 million and 1024 on my plus and minus keys because fuck typing that in every time. With busy scenes, it's also useful to have the low depth res on a bind just to make better FPS while working. Type poster underscore light bounce in the console just on its own and it'll bring up this prompt. Light size is the radius each point will cover. Light brightness is how bright each point is. I have no idea what light passes does, so just set it to 1, and poster size is poster size. Run your first light bounce render at poster 1 to test if it comes out how you like. It's no fun waiting 5 minutes for a render that didn't even work. Don't forget to run your actual light bounce at the same poster size as the rest of your scene, otherwise you'll get this and you will contract AIDS. You don't have to type a value for poster split, and in my experience it doesn't really do anything useful. I personally like to run all of my other renders before light bounce, because light bounce takes the longest to load and I enjoy using that time to edit what I have in Photoshop. Because this scene is rather huge, I've run it at 1500 512. Usually a light size between 350 and 750 is a safe bet, and usually brightness between 4 and 6 does me pretty good. For your ambience layer, bring your lamp over your scene build. Make sure to scan your sunlight with light sprayer before moving your lamp, or save the game with your lamp in its sun position so you can go back to it. Bring your radius really, really high. It depends on the size of your build. You may also want to adjust the lamp FOV, but eh, keep it. Keep it how you want. 
Now we're going to adjust the focal point distance, which is the coolest parameter that soft lamps has. Set your gameplay, not heavy light surface shape, to line, then set surface shape resolution under gameplay to two or three. This will spawn two or three lamps. With these on, make your near Z all good, and then adjust the focal point distance slider. This defines where your lamps intersect, and it creates an incredible realistic ambience layer when set properly. I set mine dead in the middle of the build, which is generally a safe bet again, and hit render. If you did light bounce before this, don't forget to set your shadows back to high res. Now you've got three renders, throw them into Photoshop and set them to screen. Adjust the opacity of your layers to quickly and non-destructively manipulate lighting ratios. Sky ambience should match the color of your sky as well, which in most cases is blue. You can do this however you want. Sky and Z depth. Go back into your game and find your atmosphere editors. We need a sky and a Z depth, which will be referred to as a fog layer from now on. Find your sky editor and set all three colors to absolute white, then run poster command. The poster size has to match the rest of your renders, of course. Now this is instantly a perfect mask for the sky. Go into Photoshop, create a new group, drag in your sky mask, then Control A to select the data on the layer, Control C to copy it, then click on your group and press the create mask button, then alt click the mask, then Control V to paste the mask, into the mask. Okay, now everything you do in this group will only affect the sky. It's pretty fucking sweet. You can do this mask technique with just about anything, but that's more advanced territory. Go back into your game and open up your fog settings. Keep your sky white and by extension make sure your fog color is also white. Now swing in your near and far settings and get yourself something that looks good. A general guideline is you want your furthest elements to still be visible against the sky and your nearest elements to be close to black. Now run poster command, match the size of course, and put it in your picture. Generally, you'll want it above your sky group, otherwise you get some fucky things happening. Now don't think that because the scene is sunny, it doesn't need fog. Fog is very important for something real artists call atmospheric perspective, and it's also a pretty decent color mediator. It's also generally a good idea to match the fog color with your sky somewhat. In this example, it'd be faded blue more or less. You can also do a blue to white gradient and then put the Z depth in the mask, which is more or less the best way to do it, but it's up to you. So you've got all your renders in, but man, shit, your colors suck. Most of the time, raw renders look pretty faded and lack contrast. There's a million ways to remedy this, especially with Photoshop, but I like just whacking a contrast layer over everything and then after all my minor post edits I throw in an LUT or something of the sort. The overcast example. This section assumes that you already understand the basics of soft lamps and manipulating renders in post. Just a heads up. Overcast and foggy lighting is super fun to do, and to me, more so than sunny exteriors. And people tend to think that it's harder than it is. We follow the basic three render principle from before. Your sun layer, however, is now a subtle highlight layer. Set its radius somewhere in the hundreds and use it to add some extra dimension to your surfaces. Now do overhead ambience. Same process as before. Very high radius, focal point on the Scene. This will be the majority of the light in your scene, so make sure you get as much as you can in the picture. Now light bounce. Scan your ambience instead of your highlight. This will bounce light off the ground and other surfaces and complement your ambient lighting. Throw all of these into Photoshop, give yourself a cloudy sky, give yourself a more generous fog layer while you're at it, and give yourself a cool moody color set. You can also apply a mask to your Z depth and run a gradient up it, or however you want to handle it. And that's it. That's the whole rendering process. Give yourself time, be patient with it, and don't be overly ambitious and eventually you'll get it. I'm gonna deal some extra tips to you. I like having a bind toggle for Fulbright, showing effect rings, and fast room. It's just really, really easy. I put the glow material on my lamp so I don't lose where it is. I have a canvas save, which saves me a shit ton of time. It comes ready with a lamp with all the settings that I like using punched into it, a floor plate with a color that's easy on the eyes, all my atmosphere editors with settings that are easy on the eyes, and a marker to display where the light spot is. There's also this cool masking method that I've come up with, where you can use the aforementioned glow material to create instant masks. You can also use it to create sick character PNGs or isolate objects for texture editing like this. And yeah, that's it. That's soft lamps. Download link in the description for the uh, PSDs as well. The two examples that I did plus that little overcast UN picture that I made. So feel free to download them and fuck around with them and go nuts.